Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom global header using Divi's theme builder. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so before we can get started creating our menu, you need to make sure you have the pages that goes onto the menu. So if I come over here to pages, if we take a look, I only have one page. So there's two ways to add your pages. You can either add them here or you can add them in the menu editor. So let me add a few pages here. So I'm going to add the about us page. So all we're doing here is just adding the page and publishing. The next one here is going to be contact. So I'm going to click here, add new. Let's call this contact, I'll publish it. And let's add one more. And this one here is going to be the services page. Publish it one more time. Now let's take a look and see if all our pages are showing. So I'm going to come back over here, click on all pages. And now we can see all our pages are showing. Now the second way to add your pages is by coming over here to appearance, click on menus. And this is where you can create a custom link by coming over here. And you can add your link text and the URL here. All right, so now it's time to set up our menu. So the first step is to come over here and give your menu a name. I've given mine a name of main menu. And the second important thing we need to do here is to make sure we assign it to the primary menu. Once you've done that, we can now save changes or save the menu. And now we can go to our builder. So if we come over here to Divi, just hover over it and then you can see theme builder. So I'm going to select it and now we are able to start building our theme builder. So I'm going to come over here and click on add global header and then I'm going to click on build global header. So I'm going to build this from scratch. Now, before I can add anything in here, I just need to make a few changes to my section. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon and then I'm going to come over here to design sizing and I want to make sure this is set to 100% and my maximum width here is going to be 1280 pixels. Now for this to look correct, I also need to set my sizes for my tablet and my smartphone. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, click on tablet. And over here, I'm just going to make sure that this is 100%. And the same for the phone as well. Next, you want to make sure that everything is all centered here. All right, so the next stage is to come over here to spacing and remove the padding, both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to set this to zero, apply my chain so the value can be applied to the bottom as well. And then I'm going to go to my borders. And here I'm going to add uh, 50 pixels to the bottom and uh, bottom right and bottom left. So in order for me to do that, I need to deactivate this chain because any value that I add here while this chain is activated is going to be applied to all the sides. So I'm going to uh, break the chain and I'm going to set 50 pixels here and 50 pixels here as well. Next, I'm going to add a box shadow. So I'm going to scroll down here, click on box shadow. The option I'm going to go with is the first one. And I'm also going to add a blur strength of 60%. Come over here, set my 60 pixels, not percent. All right, so my shadow color, I'm just going to paste my value between the brackets here, just like that. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. And you can also download this header design. It's absolutely free. All right, so the next stage now is to come over here to advanced visibility and just make sure that my horizontal and vertical overflow is set to hidden. And then finally here on the Z index, I'm going to set this to 999. This just ensures that this is always going to be on top of everything else on this website. Now on this visibility, let's change the hover action to be visible. So I'm going to click here on this arrow, click on hover. And here we're going to set this to visible. And we're also going to do the same on the vertical. Make sure that uh, on the hover, it's set to visible. Then I'm going to save. Okay, so now that our header has been designed, I am going to now add my columns. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, choose three columns. Now before I do anything here, I'm just going to go into my row settings and add a background color. So I'm going to come over here to my background, click this plus button and paste my color in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So the next stage is to come over here to design, click on sizing. And here we need to set our custom gutter width. So I'm going to activate it, set it to yes. And then I'm just going to 
reduce this up to one. Now, what the gutter width does is it just removes the space between the columns. All right, so the next stage is to make my width 100%, and I'm also going to set my maximum width to 100%. Now, to make sure that these columns appear next to each other, I'm just gonna add a little bit of a, a CSS snippet, and this needs to go to the main element. So I'm gonna click here on Advanced, Custom CSS, and I'm gonna paste the CSS code to the main element. So I'm gonna save, and then on my first column here, I'm gonna add my image module. And this is where we're gonna add our logo. So I'm gonna select my image, and then I'm gonna come over here and look for a logo. So we have a logo here called Divi, so we can just go ahead and use that one. Click Upload. Next, I'm gonna come over here to Design Alignment, and I'm gonna make sure that this is aligned left. And then I'm gonna come over here to the sizing, and I can specify the size for this by adding a width of 100 pixels. Next, I'm gonna head over to my spacing because I need to add a bit of margin and also some padding. So. For my top margin, I'm gonna set this to five pixels and my left margin is going to be 50 pixels. Now we might as well add our sizes for the desktop and tablet. So I'm gonna click here on this little arrow, I mean on this little uh, icon here. So for my tablets, I'm gonna set this to 20 pixels and the same applies for my phone and then save. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to add some social media follow icons. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and search for social media, I'm gonna select it. So at the moment we just have two, so we can go ahead and add another one here. And this time I'm gonna add Instagram because that's quite popular. Next, I'm gonna come over here to the background and set my color. So I'm gonna add full transparency here, back, do the same over here on Twitter, back, go to Facebook, and now I've added all my icons. Now for the module alignment, I also need to align this to the center. So I'm gonna come over here to design alignment and make sure that it's centered. And then for the icon color, I'm just gonna make sure that this is set to white. So I'm gonna come over here and paste my value for white. So now all my icons are set to white. Now the next thing I need to do just to make sure everything is aligned well is to add a bit of margin. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and for the top margin, I'm gonna set this to 10 pixels and then save. Here on column three, I'm gonna add a button so I'm gonna search for in fact it's right here so on the buttons there on the button here I'm just gonna say buy tickets and this time for my alignment I am going to align this to the right now let's customize this button and make it look a bit more stylized so I'm gonna come over here to button use custom styles for button and the first thing I'm gonna start with here is by adding my button text size and I'm gonna set this to 12 and then for the desktop and tablet, I'm gonna set this to 10. So I'm gonna come over here, change this to 10. Same thing over here, 10 pixels. So this just ensures that uh, all my different views uh, look really nice. All right, so back over here on the tablet, uh, my button text color is going to be white. And now it's time to add my button background color. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and paste it. My border width here, it doesn't look nice with it, so I'm just gonna remove that completely. Then I'm gonna move on and go to my button border radius. So for the button border radius, I'm gonna set this to zero. And now let's add our custom font. So here we're gonna set this to open sans. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. Now for this to really stand out, I'm gonna make this bold. Come over here, set this to bold. And you know what? I might as well make this all uppercase. And then to make it easier to read, I'm gonna add some letter spacing. So I think I'm gonna go with five pixels here. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is to head over to spacing and give this button some breathing space. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start here with my padding and I'm gonna add it both to the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna set this to 20 pixels and then left and right padding. This is gonna be 50 pixels activate my chain. And I'm also gonna go in and set my values for my tablets and my phone. So for the tablet, I'm gonna set my left and right padding to 15 pixels. Okay, so for now we're gonna save. And now it's time to add another row. So I'm gonna come over here, click this plus button. And this time this row is gonna have a single column. Now let's head over to our row settings one more time. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start with my design tab sizing and we are going to also activate our gutter width and set this to one as we did before. And our width here is gonna be 100% and our maximum width is also going to be 100%. 
Now let's head over to spacing and this time I'm going to remove the top and bottom padding. So I'm gonna set this to zero and then save. Next, I'm gonna add my menu. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. Right, so let's go ahead and uh, make some customizations here. So first of all, I'm gonna come over here to my design and here we're going to have this centered. Next, I'm gonna come over here to now it's time to customize our menu links. So I'm gonna come over here to menu text and start by adding my active link color. So I'm gonna click here and set my color. So next I'm gonna to go to my icon. So I need to set a specific color here for my hamburger icon. So I'm gonna click here on this little icon and paste my color. Now you'll notice that my color here goes along with my branding. So it's important that you add all your colors here just to make your menu look professional. Right, so the next stage now is to work on my menu. So I'm gonna go to menu text and here we need to change our font to Prata. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. And we're also gonna change the color here to black just so that it really stands out. Right, so pretty much we're almost done. So the next stage is just to make sure that um, our menu here is sticky as people use our website. And to do that, we need to go back over here to our section settings, click on advanced, and on the main elements here on custom CSS, this is where we need to add this CSS snippet. So this is going to make our header sticky. So I'm gonna save this for now. And then finally over here, I'm also going to go into design, spacing and just make sure I add a padding of zero to the top and the bottom just to reduce the size a little bit. So pretty much our design is complete now. That's looking really, really nice. I'm going to save this and close it and then save over here as well. Now let's take a look at our website. So I'm gonna come over here, click on a visit site and I'm gonna open this in a new tab so we can see exactly what is happening. So as you can see, this is now our menu. And when I scroll, you can see there it's sticky and that looks really cool. So in order for me to see everything clearly, what I need to do is to log out of this. So I'm gonna click here on log out and then just go to my homepage. So there we go. Now this is my custom header. It's sticky. It stays at the top as I'm scrolling. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.